menu tonight is chicken and wild rice soup. You guys, this has been on my menu plan, I swear, since last year, like a full year ago. I don't know, something about it just sounds so comforting and cozy and, is that my phone? All right, well, we got a house update, but not what you're expecting on a different house. Okay, anyway, a new one was listed. It's nothing exciting. <laughs> well, I mean, it could be exciting. I haven't looked at it yet. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yes, okay. So the weather here in Florida, you guys, I've been wearing sweaters. You guys, I have been wearing sweaters so much so. This is my new one from Target. I think this is the arm. It like completely unraveled. I'm so upset about it. That's a story for another time that I will probably never tell. Anyway, what I'm getting at is it's kind of chilly here. I am loving it. Loving every stinking second of it. So I figured I would whip together this soup in the good old crack pot. So what do you need for soup? Oh, just a mirepoix. It's always a great base for a soup. Celery, carrot, onion, lovely. We also have a couple tablespoons of butter. We're only going to need a couple. I just brought the whole stick out because that's how I get everything prepared. I have some garlic, some Italian seasoning. You actually need some thyme and sage. I don't have those. I feel like you can't go wrong with good old Italian seasoning. I mean, I might have those. I just, I'm too lazy to look through my cupboard and dig through crap. I'm not doing it. I also, oh yes, I finally found the wild rice blend. So on the blog that I got this recipe from, they suggested to get this brand of wild rice. So Londonburg, nope, not Londonburg, just Lundberg. Oh, it's American grown? Well, the name I would have never known. I thought it's like German or something. That's misleading. Gluten? Gluten-free? Gluten-free rice? Okay, now I'm intrigued. It's a whole grain, good for the whole family. We're gonna see if the whole family thinks it's good, right? And then we need six cups of broth and then some chicken. I just have this lonely old chicken tender packet. Uh, it's probably not a pound of chicken. Uh, you know what, it might be. Let me see here if this is pretty even. Could I lift weights with it? Yes. Oh my gosh, when I was younger, did you guys ever do this? Like lifted weights with cans? Just because you didn't own any real weights. Okay, no, just me. All right, let's whip it up. <laughs> I'm just gonna chop up these vegetables super fast. I like to leave the leafy ends on because it adds so, ooh, I'm getting the tag in there and I just cut my thumb. Oh, the tags. It's okay, I survived, no blood. Cause baby, now we've got no blood. Anyway, leave the leafy greens on. It adds so much flavor. If you don't like the texture of vegetables in your soup, or I don't know, you don't like to eat them or you don't have them, buy some celery seed. It adds the flavor without the actual goodness and nutrition of, a, <laughs> of eating a vegetable. Now that the veggies are chopped up, let's add it to the crack pot. I didn't really uh, write down directions, so I assume you just add everything to the crock pot. Make it look all nice and magazine quality here. Oh yeah, and I forgot yesterday, I thought out this meat. It's the chicken thighs with the bone in, and I just thought that would give the soup so much more flavor. So I'm just gonna throw some of these in. Oh my gosh, by some, I mean there are four in here. So much chicken. Well, if that doesn't get clicks on Pinterest, I don't know what would. Okay, in go the bay leaves, thyme, and sage. Just use your imagination. <laughs> A little bit of salt and pepper. I think the picture I saw on Pinterest just had a couple pats of butter right there and it made it look so cute. Mine doesn't look as cute. Also, I added three pats of butter because welcome to America. Also some garlic. Three quarters cup of wild rice here. Kind of looks like bird seed. Oh, you can see where I cut myself. Look at that. Saved by the nail. Mmm. You know what? Raw chicken has never smelled that good. I actually think I smell the celery. Okay, I'm just cracking open three cans of chicken broth or chicken stock, whatever you have. The equivalent of six cups. I mean, I feel like two cans would have sufficed, but you know. you know how I like to follow directions. I was about to shove my hand in there and mix everything, and then I realized you guys are watching. And then I remembered I don't care. <laughs> I'm just gonna mix everything together. Get everyone all nice and situated there. Uh, I didn't wash my hands. Grab the lid. I'm kidding. Oh, you guys are so funny. All right, see you in a bit. There's the soup. It's looking quite nice. I'm pretty sure it's done. I just burnt my tongue off trying to give it a little taste test. Um, I'm just gonna take the chicken out. 
Oh my gosh, and shred it up. I can't even pick the chicken up. It's just falling straight off the bone. That's the best part of cooking in a crock pot. Did you guys know you can cook a whole chicken in a crock pot? Like no preparation needed. You just take a whole chicken. Well, maybe a little bit of prep. You cover it with any seasoning you want. It could be as simple as salt and pepper and then maybe a little bit of butter if that's what you like. Rub it all over. Throw it in your crock pot. That's it. You don't add any liquid, you don't add anything. You put a lid on it and when you come home later in the day, it is filled to the max with juice. The chicken is super tender. So that is a great economical option if, if you can find a chicken for a good price. I know I used to be able to find them all the time, but now I feel like they're a little expensive. It's almost cheaper to get a rotisserie chicken. But if it's on sale or whatever, you know? Once I got the chicken all off the bone, I'm just gonna add it right back to the soup. Oh, yes! Food Network who? Give it a nice mix. Oh yeah, that looks like a nice winter soup. I also feel like if you wanted to add a little more rice, you could totally do that. Let me serve it up. Bon appetit! So I'm putting some aside for Meredith to cool down before we eat. Uh, and I'm eating some in the process. And I have to tell you, it's good, but it's nothing that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Let me make it tomorrow. Like I'm not excited about the leftovers. The broth is nice. The veggies are nice. The rice is nice. The chicken is nice. It's nice. But would I ask it out on a second date? Debatable. <laughs> All right, early in the morning, we're gonna throw some crap in a crock pot to eat in nine hours. That seems weird. But tonight on the menu, again, I don't have a name, I never do. It's nya, oh no, I, I do. It's a crock pot copycat recipe for, it's either Olive Garden or Caraba, one of those chain restaurants. Gnocchi soup, spinach gnocchi soup, chicken gnocchi, it's something, something about gnocchis, okay? And that's how I say it. You can say it any way you want, tomato, tomato. You obviously need some gnocchi for these. You can make them yourself or go the easy route like I do because take shortcuts when you can, unless you have the time not to. I got the mini ones just because I feel like they're, they're easy to eat or better to eat. Who cares? Use the big ones if you want. That's what I, I actually have two packages I might add, but I just pulled one out just for a good visual. You also need some chicken. I have thighs. The recipe calls for chicken breasts. It's probably a little more lean if you're looking out for your calories. You also need a couple ribs of celery, an onion. It also calls for carrots, but I do not like carrots in this recipe. I've made it before, but not in the crock pot. So we're gonna see how good it turns out if it's comparable. I have some Italian seasoning. It calls for basil. This just has more, you know? Invest Separated milk, you need 24 ounces, so two cans, and then four cups of chicken broth, or if you have water, and then that like better than bouillon stuff. And then some spinach, we add that in at the end. This is actually frozen, I just keep it in my freezer. It's good all the time. So let's get to chopping. All right, new day, same pants. I just washed this celery, and by the way, gosh, is celery so stinking dirty. I'm just gonna cut mine into, I mean, I don't know what to call it here. I just slice it down the middle and make them smaller because I like small bites of celery. I like the flavor. Oh, you know what? Last time I got a lot of comments. Kim, watch your fingers. Guys, I've been cooking for years. I've never cut my fingers. I know this is the proper way to hold it, but I cut my arm. I cut my arm. I didn't. I broke my arm when I was in high school. Do you see how awkward that is for me? I just can't do it. I broke my left arm when I was in high school, so my, not that you need to know this. It's totally, what am I talking about? A little insight into my life. Anyway, so I lost my range of rotation, so it's just really difficult for me to do certain things. So, you know, I keep on living my life. I'm just trying to survive over here, and I just do it the way that is best for me. Next, I'm gonna crack into this onion. Peel that layer off. Something about onions, so delicious. And this is ready for the crock. By the way, here's what I wrote down if you want <laughs> to have this in your back pocket. All right, I'm just gonna throw my veggies into the crock pot. And I will mention that this meal, you can totally make this on the stovetop. And it comes together pretty quickly. But you know, if you're gone all day and you need something by the time you get home, people like crock pots. The chicken goes in, and I forgot to mention you need four cloves of garlic. And then you need some salt and pepper, maybe a little more. Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Great. Or tablespoons. 
and then four cups of broth, which is, I think, two cans. You know what, every time I measure it though, it seems to be one and three quarters cup, but I feel like that's good enough. I will also mention, if you wanna make this without the chicken, I think you totally can and it would be fine. Because I don't like to eat the chicken chunks really, but the chicken broth does add the flavor. So I would say, you know what, if you want to save a couple bucks on some meat, you go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to cook it on low. And I'll meet you back in a minute or two. <laughs> or 540 because that's nine hours. Okay, bye. It's been a really long time. I realized a couple hours in that my Instant Pot was not plugged in all the way. So that was fun. Hopefully this is all cooked. Oh yeah. It's like falling apart. You gotta love chicken thighs. They're nice and juicy every time. I am just taking this little masher and I'm mashing the chicken. You can take it out and then separate it if you want. All right, things were getting crazy over there. That's, we can just eat it like this. On second thought, no we can't. Now what you're gonna do is grab a cup. Then grab some cornstarch. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. Two tablespoons of water. You mix it up and it becomes this slurry that is just going to really thicken up that soup. Cornstarch is so cool. So we pop that in, give that a mix, and we're going to add these two cans of evaporated milk. I wonder why it calls for evaporated milk. Maybe because you won't really be bringing it to a boil, you know? Oh, shake well. Whoops. All right, here we go. And then my favorite part is adding in the gnocchi. I always seem to burn myself. success and then you just let this cook for 30 minutes just until the gnocchi is soft you know what i might add another package of the gnocchi there we go now it's less soupy and more saucy okay cool 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 oh my gosh my google device just turned on it's always listening all right pop the top on that 30 minutes. I startle easy, by the way. Do you startle easy? All right. I just had a bite, you guys, of that soup to see if the noodles were done, the little dumplings, which is what gnocchi is. I mean, is this enough spinach? What do I do? I'm just gonna chop up some spinach and throw it in. Ooh, it's cold. And then it should be ready to eat. Come on, Kim, you can do it. Oh, it's so cold. Like holding an ice cube. Everybody's watching. Oh, so I'm just gonna sprinkle some spinach in. Hit me with your best shot. Oh yeah, and it's ready to eat. Oh my word, this looks delicious, and I even had a taste. It is delicious. What um, what did it say to add that I thought? Nah. Oh oh, bacon. You can add bacon onto this. I'm. I mean, I like bacon, but I don't think it needs it. So there it is. Bon appetit, my creeps. If you want to be really fancy, you can serve this with an Olive Garden style salad and it'll be like you're having soup and salad at the Olive Garden. Oh my gosh, breadsticks, should we make those? I've never made copycat breadsticks from Olive Garden. Wait, is this even Olive Garden? I don't know. <laughs> Olive Garden, Carrabba's, doesn't matter what it is. It tasted delicious. Uh, it may be slightly better if you make it on the stove top, but good nonetheless. Okay, tonight for dinner, I am going to make Tuscan chicken. I'm looking at my notes over here. I looked at a few different recipes, actually. You guys know how I like to make things my own, so I'm kind of combining two. What you're going to need is some chicken, and I'm actually running low on food, which is kind of great for this recipe, but I did run to Target yesterday to get dish soap, and I happened to see this, and I love when Target does this. They throw a coupon on top of chicken, and in hindsight, I should have picked up so many more packages, but I'm sure other people benefited too. So I got this pack of chicken for $2.70. Isn't that incredible? So I'm going to use chicken thighs. You can use any kind of chicken that you have or that you like. I'm also using one onion. You need sun-dried tomatoes for this and the juice that it comes in, which seems a little excessive. You also need some spinach, unless you don't like spinach, maybe use kale, unless you don't like green stuff, in which case omit it. You also need, this is where I'm combining a couple recipes. First recipe says just this stuff, and then garlic, some salt and pepper, maybe some Italian spices, I forgot kind of. But then another recipe I was reading says you needed heavy cream, uh, I don't have that, so. I'm going to use the good old fashioned unsweetened original almond milk. And then I think it actually called for Parmesan cheese. I do have some of that. I'll probably add it in at the end if I feel like it's necessary, but let's start out with this. I'm just going to chop up the onion. 
I should also mention that this recipe calls for artichoke hearts. And I thought I had some. I must have used them in a different recipe. Uh, I've, I'm sure the recipe will be fine without it, but I'm just mentioning that if you want to add it. I definitely don't feel like going to the store right now. If you saw me, you would understand why. This is the definition of you work with what you have and I'm sure everything will turn out just fine. Okay, let's add this to the crock. To start, I'm just going to add a few pieces of chicken to the bottom. I'm just gonna do three, that seems fine. And then I'll save the other three for another meal. Look at that, screaming deal. I'm washing my hands. Actually, this dinner doesn't have a lot of veggies, so I'm just gonna add in the rest of the chicken. <laughs> Still a screaming deal. Still washing my hands. Then I'm going to sprinkle in six cloves of garlic. And you guys know I normally use a ton more garlic than it calls for, but for whatever reason, this garlic is so potent, it's insane. Oh my gosh, you guys, I don't even need an onion for this. Oh, I must have been reading a different recipe. Oh yeah, I do, one onion. I'm an idiot. I'm gonna sprinkle one onion in. <laughs> oh crap, I think we were supposed to season the chicken. Throw some salt and pepper in here. Good, good, good. Here's where you throw the artichokes in, unless you're not adding them. And I'm going to add the sun-dried tomatoes. It says eight ounces, but good golly, Miss Molly, that seems excessive. Oh man, I'm really debating life. It's like, what am I gonna do with the rest of this? You know, nothing. So just dump it all in there. If you're crafty, you can save this jar for something cool. I'm not. And then that's it. I don't think so. Not in my kitchen. I'm going to add just a little bit of Italian seasoning. Really start the party. Uh, we add spinach at the end because that cooks in like two seconds. So you could totally stop here. Uh, but I like a little cream in here. And by cream, I mean uh, dairy-free almond milk. I, I think this is just going to serve as a nice little base if I serve it with like noodles or whatever. I don't know what I added. About a cup. There, now that's a cup. Cover it, cook it. That chicken's gonna let out some juice too, so we're gonna eat in a few hours. I'll show you what it looks like. Oh wait, no we're not. We're gonna throw in some spinach soon. So I'm just gonna take some spinach and give it a rough chop. Oh my gosh, it's like ice. No, it's actually not so bad. Don't cut your finger off. So I think the recipe calls for two cups. With Ooh, that looks like something. Does not look like it does on Pinterest. <laughs> but I am going to sprinkle the spinach over top. I just covered it and it should be done in about 10 minutes. I'm going to cook a spaghetti squash. Well, I'm also making pasta for everyone else, but whoever wants it, I'm also going to offer spaghetti squash with it because that's what I enjoy. And I have to tell you something. Okay, it's been like 20 minutes. I got so many distractions. But what I wanted to say is the other day, I cooked the spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot because so many people were like, oh yeah, you don't even have to cut it. Just pop it right in there. I'm here to tell you the truth. The truth is, uh, don't ever do that because I could not seed it. I feel like I got rid of the entire spaghetti squash when I took it out, finally cut it, and then decided to seed it. Cause see all these strings? Well, that's what the spaghetti squash looks like when it's done. And I couldn't get the seeds out because it was piping hot. And then I had to wait 20 minutes to eat it because it was a whole ordeal, you guys. So my advice is to just cut and seed your squash beforehand. It's no big deal. And you can still cook it when it's cut in your Instant Pot. I don't really know numbers, guys. I'm going to throw it in my microwave because, <laughs> well, I don't really get along with my Instant Pot lately. Drizzle it with a little bit of oil. You can do coconut oil if you want and then salt and pepper. And I'll cover mine and microwave it for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. Uh, the lighting of this camera makes it look better than it does in real life, if you can believe that. I'm just gonna see what the chicken's like down here. Oh my gosh, like butter. So hopefully it tastes really great. It's nice, I'm just gonna give it a mix. And I figure, you know what, if you want this sauce to be a little thicker, because when you make this on the stove top, it is like a creamy sauce. Oh, maybe. Instead of adding the cup of milk, you can add like a jarred Alfredo sauce. That's an option too. If you want it thicker, add like a cornstarch slurry. Otherwise, I mean, this does look pretty nice. It's like a soup, like chicken soup. All right, I'm just going to pour it on our noodles right there and serve it with a salad. I'm showing you the bowl because this looks like a small salad until you see how massive the bowl is. So perfect combo. This is what the finished spaghetti squash looks like. Get a good shot of the peeling action like magic. Look, this is why they call it spaghetti squash. Looks like spaghetti yeah. noodles. Meredith, you want some? <laughs> yes. If you wanna be really fancy, you can serve it right in the spaghetti squash. 
skin. <laughs> this is what they do on Pinterest, okay? Now, Food Network can call me. I am ready for my show. This was really great too. I served it with noodles to my kids. They gobbled it up. I will say, there's sun-dried tomatoes. There were so many of them. Other than that, fantastic. On the menu today is some honey garlic chicken. This is a recipe that I make in my oven often. It's a really quick recipe I can throw together. I normally have all the ingredients on hand. You just need, forgot the star of the show here, chicken thighs. Uh, these are skin on, bone in. You don't have to use that, but this is just what I have in my freezer, so that's what I'm using. You also need some veggies, which I don't typically like in my crack pot, but I am going to give it a chance. Normally, when I, whenever I cook veggies in my crock pot, it's just like, ugh, you know? So we have some potatoes, onion, carrots. I have green beans. You add those in almost when it's finished. And then I have cocoa aminos. You can use soy sauce if that's your thing. I have Italian seasoning. Okay, the recipe gets weird and it calls for ketchup. I just rubs me the wrong way, so I'm just gonna use brown sugar, some honey, and then a little bit of garlic. I have really high hopes for this recipe because, like I said, it's, it's similar to something I make all the time. So I'm crossing my fingers that it is decent. Let's give it a goo. I'm just gonna clean up a couple of carrots. The recipe calls for one pound. I think I have more than one pound, but I would rather have too many vegetables than not enough. And I'm just going to cut them into matchsticks. The blog I got this recipe from didn't even cut their carrots up, so I think I'm making more work for myself, but they just seem more appetizing when they're smaller. But you do what you want, it's your kitchen. Then I'm going to chop up one onion, and this onion looks massive, definitely GMO. And then I'm going to cut the potatoes just into edible sized pieces. Maybe I'm making these too small since my chicken is still pretty frozen. Oh well, what's done is done. Oh, I guess I should also tell you it calls for one pound of potatoes. All that noise you hear is just Meredith running into stuff. <laughs> so these are my chicken thighs. I can't separate them. <laughs> it's a frozen block of ice, no big deal. You know how on Pinterest they always put their food in the crock pot so strategically and making it look all nice and stuff? I'm gonna try to do that. So potatoes, carrots, a lot of carrots, and the onion right here. Is that nice or what? Look at that. I could be a food blogger after all. Maybe in a past life. I am going to squeeze a third cup of honey in here. There she goes. And then half a cup of soy sauce or cocoa aminos, which is soy free but tastes uh, what I think exactly the same. A little bit of Italian seasoning. I think the recipe actually calls for like thyme and sage and I don't know, you get your bang for your buck all, all here in one convenient jar. Can't beat it. it. Doesn't call for either of those. It calls for parsley and oregano. <laughs> tomato, tomato, some salt, some pepper. Quarter cup of ketchup, but I feel like what they're really wanting from the ketchup is just the sugar. And I don't like ketchup. I am like the one person on planet Earth who does not enjoy ketchup. I don't know why. So I'm just adding in equal parts brown sugar. And when I cook that in the oven, that's what really gives it a nice color on top and then a little bit of garlic. I'm just gonna give that a mix. And I'm going to dump it all over the chicken and the vegetables, I think, right? Too late now. Let's cross our fingers, pop on the top. See you in a bit. So, it's almost finished. Ooh, it looks decent. Ooh, the potatoes are soft. Carrots are soft, it smells really good. The chicken does look better when you cook it in the oven, but this is when it says to add in the green beans. So that's what I'm gonna do. Is that it? <laughs> Just cover it back up, I guess. Okay, what do we have here? That dinner I see? You guys, potatoes in a crock pot? Just don't do it. That's my tip for you. <laughs> it just smells so earthy, like there's no flavor in this potato. Let me, let me give it a little taste test. Not so bad, mostly because of all that brown sugar and all the other things that we, I don't even remember what we mixed together. It does taste good, but it's still like a mushy potato, you know? I'd rather have a little crunch. Nothing out of the crock pot ever comes out crunchy. But, you know, it's all preference. All right, there it is. We're gonna plate it, get ready for dinner. Kids are about to come in, set the table, all that good stuff. A bon appetit. By the way, that chicken doesn't look so bad. And if you have extra time and really care about presentation and wanting it to look presentable, you can pop these chickens in your oven, put it on broil for like, I don't know, three minutes and it'll look nice and crispy. Well, I just had another bite of potato. Good golly, Miss Molly. And look at that chicken falls right off the bone. Oh, this is fantastic. 
Mm, mm -hmm. The chicken is nice and juicy. The flavor of this, whatever is down here, what did we add? I really don't remember. All I know is brown sugar. I, that is the flavor I taste. Oh, honey, yes, yes, yes. You know what, let me just try a green bean while I'm in here. Mm. It's the Italian seasoning is what I taste. Okay, personal preference here, I would rather have all of this roasted in the oven. But if you're gonna be gone all day and you want dinner waiting for you when you get home, Great option. Tonight for dinner, I don't know what it's called. I got it off Pinterest. Here's the recipe that I jotted down. I think it's called like lip smacking pork chops. Who knows? It's a crock pot meal. It looked semi healthy. So we have some potatoes, probably more than the recipe calls for. Apple cider vinegar, weird, but I'm gonna trust the process. Ranch seasoning, basically the only seasoning. Butter, salt, pepper, right there. And then I tried to sear the pork chops. You guys, my pans, like, ah, whatever. I did my best, they're barely seared, but we're working with what we have. I was going to use my Instant Pot to sear the pork chops, but I wanted to stay true to the whole crock pot deal, so that's what I get. You just dump your potatoes in. The recipe actually calls for red potatoes, but this is what I had, and then I guess you just throw the pork chops on right on top. Now we're gonna make the special sauce. It's half a cup of oil which seems a little excessive. Two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of the ranch seasoning. That just doesn't seem enough for me, so I'm gonna add three. And then some salt and pepper. And you mix this together. I'm sure you could just dump it right into your crock pot without mixing it all together and having to wash an extra dish. You dump it on top. I thought I was filming. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then you take two tablespoons of butter and just pat, just throw that in. And then you pop the top on it and you wait. Just took the top off. Once you pop, the fun don't stop. I also took a little piece off. I'm gonna do a little taste test. Ooh, that was a slimy piece. The potatoes are nice and tender. And there's a lot of liquid on the bottom. It does smell like earth. So there's that. Maybe add a little more herb if you feel like it. All right, I had a phone call. I don't know what I was saying. The pork chops look a little dry, but I did just take a piece. The herbs on it or whatever the spices they're pretty nice i haven't had a lick of this potato though mmm tastes like a potato <laughs> they're not too mushy which i like and i had it on low for five and a half hours all in all i'm thinking this needs a little green well my veggies are cooking in the microwave because that's the ultimate way to have a crock pot easy weeknight meal i'm going to make just a simple gravy i have the, all the drippings, this isn't even all the drippings, it's just however much I thought we would use. And then I just combine a little bit of flour, a little bit of water, because the taste of that pork juice, pork drippings, whatever it was, all that oil basically, it, the taste is really nice, so I think it'll make a decent gravy. Because those potatoes definitely need something. Maybe a stick of butter if you just want to make some smashed potatoes. Okay, here it is all finished. Uh, this is my plate. I did smush the potatoes a little bit. Ooh, it's a little dirty. Don't call the Food Network yet. And here's the finished gravy. I used, I think like two and a half tablespoons of flour and three tablespoons of water, mixed it together and I just added it to it. And I'm just going to add it right on top. And of course you could use chicken in place of pork. I actually don't cook with pork a lot, but I had it in my freezer, so I need to make it and dinner is served. Bon appetit. But of course, I'm gonna finish putting gravy over top everything. <laughs> Wentworth, what day is it? Brownie Friday. So we all make brownies. We are making some brownies. On Fridays, we like to celebrate with brownies. And keeping on theme, I am going to make some crock pot brownies. So I found this recipe from Martha Stewart. If it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. Although I doubt she is the one who actually created the <laughs> recipe. Uh, basically, you need everything that you would normally use to make brownies. Uh, maybe the ratios are a bit different. I forgot what I was saying. Lots of children. We should probably get Eleanor in here too. Flour, sugar, chocolate chips, cocoa powder, baking powder, eggs, butter, some salt. Nothing revolutionary. Although we are gonna fancy it up with this baker's chocolate. And then I found this leftover chocolate. We're gonna use it up too. We switched out the eggs. Alex just came back from his mom's house and she has chickens. This just reminds me of when we had chickens getting blue eggs like this. So fun, so we're gonna use these instead. Oh, and also this is a duck egg. I don't know the difference. One and a quarter cup of flour. 
No, big flour. Quarter cup of baking of cocoa powder. Oh. A little bit of salt. One pack of this. Three quarters teaspoon baking powder. And then you whisk that up. Yeah, you can do that. One stick of melted butter. Melted butter. One cup of sugar. You're supposed to make all mix all the liquids together. It's whatever. And then three eggs. Let's get this duck egg in here, see if it looks any different. Ooh, it's bigger. Oh my gosh, it's thick. Hard to puncture. Rich color. Okay, now we have eight ounces of melted chocolate. Not quite eight ounces, but that's all I have. It's good enough. Okay, once that's mixed, it's a pretty thick mixture. You just add in a cup of chocolate chips. Bounty cupcakes. It's a pretty thick batter. Oh my gosh, I just filmed for literally 10 minutes. It wasn't on. Uh, all right, well you missed the magic of me dumping it in the crock pot. Maybe I should recreate it. Is it worth it? No. That's what happens when you have four kids running around and distracting you all the time. But I was able to spread it out. It looks perfectly fine. And then you cook it on low for three and a half hours. Like why would you need brownies in 30 minutes when you can wait three and a half hours for them? <laughs> in the crock pot. But it is nice if you want to throw it in maybe before dinner, go on a family walk, and then you don't have to worry about it, that kind of thing. When you want brownies, right when you walk in the door. Maybe it's worth it, maybe it'll make my house smell like brownies, I don't know. We're gonna find out in three and a half hours. Here it is all finished. Doesn't look like much, but it's honest work. Should we dig in? I think it's kind of cake-like. I guess we'll have to eat it to find out. So I'm not gonna lie, I, it's a little dry unless you get one of the bits with a chocolate chip and it like melts in your mouth kind of. And I think a good addition would be, you know how they sell like a jar of fudge or something? You can just pour that over top. I don't know, I'm gonna eat it with strawberries. Alex is on his second piece. The kids are gonna love it. I think strawberries just make everything taste better, so delicious. Tell them to pour milk over it. Eight, eight out of 10. Oh, Alex is eating it with milk, so there's an option. Ice cream maybe? What would you give it out of 10? If Ghirardelli brownie mix is a 10, what is this? Are you comparing the two? <laughs> yes. Alex just gave me the worst look. They don't compare? You think Ghirardelli is like far superior? This is the one that's far superior. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Nothing beats Ghirardelli, Alex. Okay, well, this is better than Ghirardelli in Alex's mind. Not mine. On the menu tonight is a crock pot classic. When I think about dump and go crock pots, this is the meal I think of, kind of. It's like, you know, some variation of taco soup. This one is called chicken burritos. How you make burritos out of this, I'll never know. <laughs> In my eyes, like maybe chicken burrito bowl or chicken burrito soup <laughs> or wet tortilla chicken burrito. <laughs> Like I said, some variation. And actually making this, I kind of think, hmm, I want chili. Ooh, you know what would be really easy in the crock pot? Chicken chili. Grab some chicken. <gasps> Ooh, bonus meal. Where is it in here? I know I have some. Well, I have this salsa, but I was thinking of salsa verde. I feel like just dump in some salsa verde, dump in some chicken, boom, you've got chicken verde soup when you come home from work. Uh, okay, so what are we actually making? This chicken burritos, you need, you, well, okay. <laughs> You guys know how I don't actually follow a recipe, so I added a few things. I might take the rice out, but I'll just go over what I'm adding. The recipe calls for diced tomatoes, one cup of chicken broth, drained beans, black beans, a can of corn, drained, I think, a one cup of rice, chili powder, cumin, and then some chicken. I'm also adding in some onions. I feel like a good dump in would also be some diced up peppers. And then some kidney beans. I'm just throwing them in there because the more the merrier, you know? Oh, and my diced tomatoes. I grabbed some with chilies. And I feel like if you don't have diced tomatoes, you grab some salsa and you're good to go. So I'm just gonna get all of this ready, dump it in my crock pot, and hopefully it tastes good. So in goes the chicken, in go the beans. I decided to drain the corn, and I know corn doesn't have a lot of nutritional value. It just smells so good. And I have to tell you, this is probably the first crock pot meal that I have ever made, or that I, you know, ever made in my life. This used to be a staple. I used to feel so domestic whenever I would throw this together. <gasps> ah! What was that? <laughs> what was that? 
Do you remember the wife I showed you that husband always <laughs> Yeah. That's the one that sounded like <laughs> Uh, okay, sorry. I got spooked the living crap out of me. I was saying, I used to feel like I had my life together whenever I would make this meal. How much chili powder do we add? I don't know. Two teaspoons of that, or tablespoons. One teaspoon of cumin, more is more. And then some salt. Okay, one onion, and then one cup of rice. I, I think this is about a cup. You know, if it's not, what am I gonna do with five grains left over? And if you don't feel like adding the rice, I would say skip it. You know, I never made this with rice. Wait, did I add the beans? Is everything in here? Well, it's not as liquidy as I thought it was going to be. So this might actually work out with some tortillas. But I also don't feel like I have tortillas. It should just be called chicken burrito bowl. The guac is extra though. Corn, rice, black beans, cumin, salt, chili powder, broth, diced tomatoes, chicken, done. Pop a top on that, see you in a bit. Okay, you guys. So I just opened this up. Unbelievable, it is super dry. I thought it was gonna be like a soup. It's totally not, little did I know. I'm going to have to shred up that chicken a little bit. But overall, I'm really impressed. I think you could totally wrap this in a burrito and it wouldn't be dripping all over the place. Or you can throw it on top of some lettuce, burrito bowl, style. I don't, I mean, eat it with a spoon, who cares? I just tasted it. Tastes fantastic. Chili and cumin is the way to go. But if you have some taco seasoning, throw that in. I really, this is pretty versatile. Throw whatever seasonings you want. Italian seasoning? I don't even care. Anyway, that is the end. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, subscribe, put a little happy in your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, by the way, I think most of these meals would work in the Instant Pot too. Don't quote me, I'm not friends with my Instant Pot. That's why I chose Croc this week.